Welcome to my thoughts on the 1990s animated X-Men series, Season 3, Episode 4, and 5. And these are Parts 2 and 3 of the Phoenix Saga, The Dark Shroud, and The Cry of the Banshee. So, before I start, there is a link in the description box to donate in support of the sac after strike which I encourage you to do as much as you can spare and there are also some links to videos talking about why this is such an important strike and yeah let's dive right in so yeah starting with the dark shroud and yeah so we we return to the 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 ship and they are, you know, yeah, Jean is, is struggling, and the, the phoenix, uh, you know, enters her body, and she is able to, to make it, and yeah, the phoenix saves her life, and more importantly, I think, gives her a nickname, finally, everybody else has a code name on this team, and... Yeah, the the um, I appreciate that before we see Dark Xavier, you know, Cyclops has a brief encounter with the you know he's he yeah Xavier is you know he manages to mostly restrain himself from from verbally attacking Scott, but he does seemingly blame Scott for the fact that it didn't go better and the yeah you know not long after the the you know yeah dark xavier is unleashed we catch wolverine in the alley trashing the trash and yeah um very cool when dark xavier attacks wolverine you know, luring him into another train car using Yuriko, then attacking him both as himself and using Deadpool again. And, you know, this is at least the second time that Deadpool has made an appearance without it being the real Deadpool. You know, it's the, the other time it was Morph. So I, I'm not entirely sure. I forget if they do end up bringing the actual Deadpool onto the show. Certainly, you could understand how the you know there's some there's some really great stories with him and Wolverine and you know dude's a mutant fits right in and yeah you know the the using an image of Jubilee which you know that's how yeah if you if you threaten a woman that he really cares about you can get Wolverine into very exposed situations. Not quite as exposed as when he and Gambit were playing basketball, but still. And, you know, he almost gets run over by the train and, you know, manages to dive out just in, in time. I feel like there's probably... I don't know if there's a comic that explicitly has it happen, but he could probably survive. The comic book version of Logan, like, it might knock him out for a little while, but... He could he could heal back from it. He's he's healed back from worse. But yeah, you know, afterwards he says, "Next time I'm walking." <laughs> yeah. And the yeah, and and then Gambit and Jubilee are attacked. Gambit like he's taking Jubilee to this like show and he's like flirting with this woman standing there like trying to make a date for afterwards like wow. And, yeah, you know, Jubilee sees Dark Xavier, who, you know, i just like to point out, some of the most evil characters on this show have quite the fashion sense. Like, nobody wears a cape, as well as these guys. You know, Magneto, not always evil. But then you've got Mr. Sinister, you've got Dark Xavier, just, yeah. And, yeah, you know, Jubilee knows, you know, Xavier's walking, Phoenix is rising, a lot of crazy things are happening here. 
and the cops surround them, which, you know, good thing Storm comes by. A nice little bit of, you know, the cops didn't need to show up, but they, they wanted something for Storm to do, a little action beat there. And, yeah, we we get the... Yeah, and, and we, you know, it's explained that, you know, Dark Xavier, you know, yeah, that was the, it was the darkness of, you know, the darkness that we all have inside us that, that was brought to the forefront. And, yeah, Lilandra explains about her brother, the crystal, and the bond. Let's see. And, and, you know, she's like, do you also believe in this bond? And he's like, yeah, now. <laughs> like, I mean, if you'd asked me a couple of episodes ago, I'd be like, mm, I don't know about that. Maybe. But yeah, I this is this is a pretty significant bit of evidence in favor of you know. And and she explains, you know, both of our galaxies are at risk. And Juggernaut shows up and we get a to be continued. Very yeah, that's a, cause cause we already know how powerful he is. They barely stopped him last time, and that brings us to the cry of the banshee. And yeah, they you know they attack Juggernaut through that the head. We get a brief flashback with some little bit of backstory of, of Juggernaut, and Black Tom Cassidy shows up. And Banshee manages to save Xavier as he's, you know, he's falling down, but Banshee can fly, which is, yeah. Sometimes I forget, like, I've, you know, it's been a while since I read, you know, one of the comics that had Banshee in it. I've been, you know, the last many times that I encountered the Banshee character, it was in, you know, X-Men First Class. So sometimes I forget that's really, it, it, again, it's been a while. I'm pretty sure this episode is much closer to the comics than, you know, is, as far as Banshee goes. Well, that and a number of other things, but that's, I'm not going to go off on a, on a rant about that movie. And not every inaccuracy is, is a bad thing. Some of it, you know, they, they managed to fit in a lot of characters in a way that would have been difficult. You know, how do you get Moira so involved if she's a scientist on Muir Island compared to making her a CIA agent, just, yeah. And, uh, yeah, Eric and, and the Juggernaut face off, and ultimately Eric has to agree to, to pay them million nice round numbers, so many zeros. And, you know, there's almost a fight between... Banshee and, and Wolverine, you know, somebody got to, has to teach you some manners, and Jubilee's like, oh no, not, the, you know, plenty of people have tried. And, yeah, so, yeah, Lalandra manages to contact Xavier, and, let's see, <clears throat> And that brings us to, yeah, and, and you know, we get this, there's this very, like, uncharacteristically daring shot where, like, you know, we have, off, off in the background, we have a juggernaut who's just been smashed into a wall, smashed through several walls and into one by Rogue. And in the foreground, we have... Um, Banshee versus Tom, using their fists to settle things, and one, there, there's a, and, and, like, we also see, like, Gambit, I forget who he is fighting, but, but just, yeah, like, so many different, like, somebody really felt like, you know, it's, it's unusual for these, like, Saturday morning cartoon shows, like, animation can do really, like, incredible stuff like that, but normally not on, like, the time and budget of one of these shows. Let's 
see. They, they deliver in other ways. And Gladiator makes one heck of an entrance. And, you know, Juggernaut goes, goes up to him and, like, tries to punch him and just nothing, you know. And Gladiator easily throws Juggernaut, you know, far away. And, you know, I, I think... Oh, crap, I forget who says what, but someone is like, I've never seen someone do that to Juggernaut, and someone else is like, nobody from Earth could do that to Juggernaut. And Phoenix does manage to, you know, there's a match for, for Gladiator, which is of course why Gladiator entered now, to, you know, so that there could be of a uh, more even matchup there. And let's see. Yeah, and Lalandra and Phoenix, you know, realize, yeah, con connect and realize what's going on. And we end on a to be continued as the brother arrives, laughing, cackling maniacally, because he can tell that the, you know, what was it? The, the crystal. Is, is he can sense the crystal, something like that. So yeah, the you know part one. So yeah, yeah. So far they they you know they gradually step more into the cosmic in these couple of episodes, which I really appreciate. You know, first the you know part one of the Phoenix Saga on this show was you know right after this alien prisoner you know escapes from this space prison space. I guess it's a prison transport, whatever, you know, and the we see how much more powerful than mutants uh, some of these aliens are. But then, you know, part one, you know, Eric the Red interferes with this human uh, space shuttle, you know, and and here, you know, we're only gradually getting a little bit more. We meet Gladiator and. You know, and yeah, and we see Phoenix. So it's you know, it's just a a handful of of you know, you can count the amount of space elements on one hand so far. And you know, I, I quite appreciate that they don't just immediately they're in like an alien civilization full of you know, and and yeah, we have this great little you know. It's a, it's a, as so many things in life, it's a problem between, like, there's some royalty that are getting power hungry and, and, you know, causing problems. And, yeah, they do a great job with, like, you know, when, when Gladiator arrives with his sweet mohawk, you know, like, immediately Eric the Red is, oh, uh... Sorry, dude, I thought I'd be ready, you know, which tells us, okay, this guy's important, you know. Because, like, we've never seen Eric be that, like, anxious. You know, we haven't known him for that long, but he, you know, he very easily defeated the X-Men right after we met him. You know, okay, so he's using gas, which is not exactly a fair fight, but still. You know, so the, the, yeah, the... I really appreciate how they they don't just immediately go, you know, all the way into this space stuff. And I think that is more or less what I have to say so far. I did quite like yeah, I I mentioned earlier, you know, in, in one of these videos we hadn't really gotten an episode that dove deep into Xavier. Like, we, we see his relationship with Magneto sometimes, but those are almost more Magneto episodes than Xavier episodes. But anyway, yeah, Dark Xavier, that was fairly Xavier-centric. And yeah, it's it's great to, to see this thing of, like, you know, yeah, he does have a dark side because... You know, until now, he's basically seemed like kind of a saint. Like, he always has the answer. He always knows better. He can always explain, you know, he's he seems like he's almost never, like, just 
at a loss. You know, like, even when th there are things that he doesn't know yet, but he, you know, he never, like, panics, you know, and to see the, the dark side, that was, uh, yeah, very, because we've seen the dark side of most of the X-Men by this point. I suppose maybe Cyclops, not quite yet, and, you know, now we're also getting these, you know, I guess it's not quite... Gene episodes. There's supposed to be quotes on around episodes as well. Anyway, um, but you know it's very important what's happening to Gene here, and so so that's also you know you can understand why, you know okay they haven't really done individual like they had Gene hasn't gotten an episode yet where the whole thing was really very much about her and her backstory. You know, the fact that, you know, doing the Phoenix Saga, that's very important. Big deal for Jean. Very important story in the comics. And she's front and center. I think that might be everything that I have to say for these couple of episodes. So, yeah. Um, really, really cool to see them do this such an important and and interesting story from the comics and yeah uh catch you again tomorrow make my marvel